Hello, welcome to the first lecture on probability. Uh, these lectures are mostly based on our online textbook that is available at uh, probabilitycourse.com. So today I would like to spend a few minutes to provide a very short introduction to probability. So what is probability? Well, I can provide the following definition. Probability is a mathematical framework to describe and analyze random phenomena. So what do I mean by random phenomena? Well, Whenever we cannot predict the outcome of an operation with certainty, we have a random experiment. So, whenever we cannot predict the outcome with certainty. So, for example, you know, when we toss a coin, the outcome might be either heads or tails. Uh, we don't know beforehand which one will happen. Or when you roll a die, the outcome might be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So these are examples of random experiments. So, um, you know, because randomness and uncertainty is everywhere, it is not surprising that uh, probability is used extensively in different areas of science, technology, and engineering. Uh, let's look at finance, for example. Well, in finance, we cannot predict the stock prices in the future with certainty. Um, so, for example, if this diagram shows the stock price of a company, and we are in, let's say, June, right now, this is now, so what we can do, we can look at the stock prices in the past, uh, and we know them with certainty, but we cannot predict the stock prices in the future with certainty. If we could, we would all be rich. So that's why we, uh, you know, we need to build probabilistic models for stocks, and that's uh, why probability is used extensively in finance. So let's look at another example. In um, wireless communication systems, um, you know, we all use our cell phones these days. Um, what happens is that when you talk on your cell phone, uh, whatever you say is uh, converted to zeros and ones, and that sequence is transmitted by the cell phone antenna to a cell tower nearby. So um, the problem is that there is always noise. What it means is that you might transmit uh, a zero but you might receive a one so there might be errors in the communications and these errors are because of the noise and inter interference in communication systems and because noise is random again we need to have probabilistic models and that's uh, again why probability is used extensively in, in wireless communication systems so these were just a few examples you can pick uh, almost any other area and find uh, examples in which we use uh, probability and the reason, again, is that probability, the randomness and uncertainty, you know, exist everywhere. So um, let's go back to our simple example of tossing a coin. Well, you might, I, I might ask you the following question. I toss a coin and I ask you, what is the probability of heads? Well, you might answer that the probability of heads is, let's show it by P of H, probability of heads, is 50%. That is the correct answer. Uh, in probability, this is the same as one half. So in probability theory, we say that probabilities are always between uh, 0 and 1. So 1 means 100%. So if an event has probability 1, that means that that event will happen uh, for sure. And 0 is the same as 0%. Now, 1 half is in the middle. Okay, so you say that the probability of heads is 1 half or 50%, and then I ask why. What do you mean that the probability of heads is 1 half? Well, there are different ways you can explain this. One way is to say this. Well, there are two possible outcomes, right? Heads or tails. And these are equally likely outcomes. What it means is that the coin is fair. So we have a fair coin. A fair coin means uh, it's a symmetric coin, so heads are, and tails are equally likely. Now, because they are equally likely and there are two possibilities, so then we say that heads is one of those two possibilities, so its probability is one out of two, one over two. And with the same argument, we could argue that probability of tails is equal to one over two. And so we can have a situ similar situation if you roll a die. Now, if you roll a die, then you have one, two, three, four, five, six possibilities, and the probability of each of them is one over six. 
So that's first interpret interpretation of probability. So we say that when we have uh, n, you know, a finite number of equally likely outcomes, then the probability of each of them is just one over the total number of them, one over n. So that's one way of explaining probabilities in situations when we have a finite number of equally likely outcomes. Well, there, there is another way of explaining uh, the probabilities. Uh, there is another way of explaining why probability of heads is uh, one half here, and that's this. The second way is to say, okay, I can do the following experiment. I toss the coin a large number of times, and I look at the portion of heads. If I do this, I will observe that close to half of the times, uh, I observe heads, and close to half of the time, I observe tails. Uh, here is just a simple experiment that I did using uh, MATLAB simulations. So I toss the coin 100 times. At the beginning, you see there is some fluctuations. The problem, you know, the, this this shows the portion of heads uh, here. So the portion of heads is small at the beginning; it goes up, goes down. But as we move to the right, you know, the, the number of coin tosses increase. We somehow get closer and closer to the line 0.5. So uh, that's the second interpretation of probability. It means that if you repeat the experiment a large number of times and you look at the relative frequency of the event happening then that's going to be the probability. So that the second interpretation is relative or long-term frequency. So we have seen two interpretations. One was this, you know, when you have n equally likely outcomes. And the second was just by repeating the same experiment a large number of times. But there are situations in real life that none of these explanations can work. For example, you might say to your friend that you have an 80% chance of getting an A in your probability course, right? Then, what do you mean by that? Well, first of all, the first, we cannot use the first explanation. It is not like we have n equally likely outcomes. You could say there are two outcomes, right? You either get an A or not get an A, but they are not necessarily uh, equally likely. The problem is not symmetric. So we cannot say, like, because there are two possible outcomes, you know, the probability is 1 over 2 or something like that. Now, how about the second explanation? Well, that means that if you repeat the experiment a large number of times, and you look at the portion of the times uh, that even happens, that means that if you can repeat the course a large number of times, um, and you see how many times you get an A. But there's a problem with that. First of all, you cannot repeat the, you know, this experiment a large number of times. You're not going to repeat your course a large number of times. But even if you want to repeat your course a large number of times, these are not the same experiments. For example, you could argue that the second time you take, a, you, you take the course, the probability of getting an A is higher than the first time. So these are not the same experiments. So we cannot use these two, these two previous explanations of prob probability. So in this case, when you say the probability of getting an A is uh, 80%, what you are doing, in fact, you are providing your degree of belief is the same uh, thing when uh, people try to predict the outcome of an election. For example, using probability tools, people uh, estimate that the probability of a certain candidate winning is 75% uh, or something like that. So this is a different type of uh, uh, interpretation of probability. And it could be subjective. It could be different from one person to another person. Now, so what what can we say about all of these? Well, so we provided some sort of definitions for probability, but these definitions that we provided for uh, probability in this video were in some sense naive definitions. They were based on our intuitive and experimental understanding. So what we are going to do in the next lectures is to discuss modern probability theory. So we want to discuss modern probability theory, which provides a general definition for probability that in some sense, covers all of the above definitions. Um, so what we are going to do is gonna, we are going to start from scratch and build probability theory using very simple axioms.